for you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Nagarjuna from Surya Hana Academy. So we uh, will start today's session. So before that, I would like to do a recap of yesterday's session, so five to ten minutes, and then we move on to today's session. So in the yesterday session, in the yesterday session, it was mainly about creation of attribute view. So based on the business requirement, how we can create attribute views? Attribute views are used to join master data tables to each other. So yesterday we have taken three tables. Table one, KNA one, which stores customer attribute related data. T005T, which stores country related data, country descriptions or country texts. T005 view, which store a region related data. So what is my requirement? My requirement is to join these three tables together and produce the desired output to the business. So what I've done is I log on to HANA Studio. In the HANA Studio, you have catalog and content. What is a catalog? Catalog is nothing but collection of schema. In schema, we have tables. Content. Content collection of package. Package is used to group together related information. So what is a package? Packages are used to group together related information. Packages are associated to delivery units. What is a delivery unit? Delivery unit is an object that is used to transport package from one system to a different system. So after creating a package, it's not mandatory to associate a delivery unit. You can associate it later stage also. So we created a package. We created sub packages under main package. And then I right click on the package and create an attribute view. Right click on the package, create an attribute view. Attribute views are information views. Information views are of three types. One is an attribute view, analytic view, and a calculation view. Again, in an attribute view, there are subtypes. 
there are subtypes inside an attribute view what are those standard time derived when we create a standard attribute view we are creating yesterday we created a standard attribute view so what are the different steps from start to finish to create an attribute view step number 1 add tables to the data foundation so let me log into the hana studio so i'll just log into hana studio <coughs> and show you what we have done yesterday so now we are in the remote desktop connection so we all know now how to log on to the remote desktop so click on start click all program click sap hana folder click sap hana studio So I'll log into the system. I'll log on to the system. Username is Hana user. Password W capital welcome one two three four, and click OK. Expand the content folder. Expand the content folder. At the content, we created a package ECC. March eighth is the package. Expand the package. so under sd we created an attribute view but this what i will try to do is i'll just delete this i'll just delete this delete i want to show it again it take it takes 2 minutes right click on package new click attribute view give the name at underscore at underscore customer provide the description <coughs> subtype is standard so how many subtypes three standard time derived how many types of information views three attribute analytic calculation i am creating an attribute view of type standard and click finish So once we click finish, now let us add tables to the data foundation. But what is a data foundation? A data foundation is a place. A data foundation is a place where you can define a relationship between tables. We can create a foundation for data. <coughs> we can create foundation for our data. So I'll click on the data foundation. When you click on the data foundation. we can see details pane properties pane sorry output pane and properties pane and here on your extreme right hand side you can see quick view now what is quick view the name the name itself says quickly we can view the options so you can view quickly the options or shortcuts available in sap hana so i'll just close this So this is the default view. I mean default perspective. I just want to close this. So at the data foundation, I'll click on the plus icon, add objects. I'll add K N one from Hana user schema. Click OK. Let us add the next table. Click on add objects again. T zero zero five T from Hana user. Click OK. Let us add the third table. T zero zero five U from Hana user. Click OK. <coughs> Now, at the data foundation, we have three tables. 
T005T, T005U, and KNA1. So step number one, to add tables to the data foundation. So we can add, right click on this, or we can just drag and drop the tables from the catalog. We can drag and drop tables from the catalog area. So we have seen yesterday, just select and drag and drop. Step number one to add tables. Step number two, define relationship between tables. So how do we define relationship between tables? Link land one of KNA1 to land one of T005T. Link regio of KNA1 to B land to B land of T005U. Now once you define relationships or once you join tables together, step number three define join type what is my type of join select the join select the join when you select a join you can see the properties of a join so at the properties of a join here here you would see something called join type at the drop down select the join type as text join and provide the language column so whenever we specify whenever we specify text join the language column we have to specify as SPRAS we have to give it as SPRAS which is a language column so what is a text join a text join is a join based on user session for example a user is logged in English it will show descriptions in English. So if, whenever you join an attribute table with that of a text table, always the join type is text join. <clears throat> now if this is also a text table, this is country text table and this text table is a region text table. So for this table also is a text join language column is SPRAS okay I will hold here I will hold this here and I'll just log into our ECC site I would like to log on to the ECC system I'll click SAP log on I just want to uh, clear one clarification I want to clear, clear one clarification over here I'll go to the ECC, I'll double click on ECC system. Let us go, let us enter the username Surya and password is Surya1234. Click enter. Let's go to SC11. Click enter. Provide the database table name. So SC11 is a transaction code where you can view tables on the source system side that's on the ECC so enter the table KNA1 and click display and click display so once we display KNA1 table click contents contents is used to view data click on contents contents is used to view data and click execute click execute to view data in the table now if you see <coughs> 002 is a customer ID, DE is country, VET is the customer name, 08 is the region name. <coughs> now what is my requirement over here? See, like DE you have CN, IN, KP, MX. US you have different country codes but how will a user know how will a business know without providing text for these IDs if you don't provide text how will business understand these IDs 
or how will business understand what is 08 or what is 09 or what is AP? Unless and until we don't provide text to them, we cannot say what is 09. It's only an ID. We need text for that. So I'll just keep it, keep this table open. I'll just try to minimize this table. I'll open the second table. Create session. I'll open, click on create session. SC11, enter. I'll open the table again, which is T005T. Click display. <coughs> click display. Okay. Click contents. Click contents. And click execute. <coughs> now, approximately T005T table. So, how many number of entries it has? It has approximately around 7000 plus entries. <coughs> Now, what is my requirement here? So here, land one is DE. When the land one is DE, T005T, when I join on land one of T005T, I provide DE. DE is nothing but Germany. Now, let me click on number of entries now. So I have 7000 plus entries. For land one DE, how many entries we have? We have 31 entries. Now, what are these 31 entries? Click close, click execute. Now, please see the ID is same. ID is same, but it has different descriptions. Like in Chinese, in English, in German, you have different languages. So, SPRAS is a language column that's actually trying to identify each description uniquely in a table. So I'll go back again. Now at SPRES, I'll restrict to English. I'll restrict to English. Now how many number of entries I have? I have only a single entry. Now this is what a text join does. So text join takes the common values, it identifies the common values, and then dynamically filters on the language key and produce the text. Now, D is English. D means Germany. So in the same way, let me show you for T005U. I'll create a session again. I'll create the session again. I'll go to SE11, SE11, click Enter. Enter the table name T005U. Click Display. Click display, click contents. So land one. So what is land one again? Land one is DE. Land one is DE. Now what is the language in which I would like to see data? English. Okay. Before that, now if I only take DE, how many entries we have? Only if I take country, I have 491 entries. If I only take English, then we have 17 entries. So here, please see, we have DE, which is country. So what is the region for DE? 08. The region is 08. So I'll go to T005 view. Now please see here, if I remove DE and only give 08 as region, so the region, to what column would I join to B land? So I would join a region, a region to B land. Please see, in the HANA studio, <coughs> I've joined a region directly to B land. So 08 from region is actually joining 08 in B land. So if I go back, if I only give 08, how many number of entries I'm getting? 28 entries. So if I close, if I execute, then if I only join on Regio, if I only join on Regio, so 08 
Sophia, 08, Baden, Dharma. So for one region, for one region ID, you have different region descriptions. I'll tell you, a sim I'll give a simple example. In India, we have Hyderabad. In Pakistan also, we have Hyderabad. But what Hyderabad are we referring to? Are we referring to Hyderabad, which is in India, or the Hyderabad in Pakistan? So we need to associate with country. So when you say Hyderabad is in India, I am referring to Hyderabad in India. So what I am trying to do, I am trying to associate Hyderabad to the country. So in the same way, because I have multiple regions, multiple region descriptions for the same ID, I need to clearly specify this region 08 is from which country, which is from DE. It is from DE. So please see now the number of entries is only one. So what I'm trying to say here is if you only try to join on region, if you only try to join on 08, in the output you get 28 entries. The maximum number of entries that you get in output is 28. But this is not my requirement. My requirement is in which country, what region. So 08 is in DE in Germany, the number of entries is 1. So what is that 1? Let's see, if I execute now, 08 in Germany in English is nothing but Baden. So if I actually only do a join Regio to B land, then it produces wrong result because you get 28 entries so what I'm going to do now, we also need to link a land one of KNA1 to land one of T005U. So when you link land one, okay, first it checks for DE. In DE, what is the region? 08. Again, if one join, if one join in a table is a text join, the other join will all will automatically be a text join. <coughs> so D08 dynamically restricted to English will produce the desired output. Okay. Step number one to add tables. Step number two define relationship between tables. Step number three define join type. Join type is a text join. Step number four. Step number four is field selection for output. So in my requirement, what I require? I require customer ID, which is KUNNR. I require customer name. I require a region ID. I require country ID. So where is country text? Country text is Landex. Country text is Landex. <coughs> and region text. Region text is BEJDI. So now let me arrange these columns. So in order to arrange these columns, customer ID, customer name, land one I'll get to the top. Landex I'll get to the top. I'll click on this icon, move up. Region, region text. Okay, so customer ID 002, name wet, country DE, text Germany is 08, BJDI is Baden. <coughs> so this is known as minimal projection. What is a minimal projection? Minimal projection is nothing but a required columns for output. So you have lot of columns over here, but based on the customer requirement, what columns I require? So these columns I'm going to select for the output. And finally, click on semantics. Semantics is nothing but 
the output of the data foundation. Whatever we do in the data foundation, it's available in the semantics. The output of the data foundation is nothing but the semantics. So in here, we need to specify at least one key attribute. We need to give at least one key attribute. So what is the key attribute over here? So KNA1 is a customer attribute table. KNA1 is a customer attribute table. So what is the key in KNA1? What is the key? KUNNR. So KUNNR is a column which identifies each customer uniquely, which is nothing but the customer number. So in every attribute view, we need to have at least one key attribute. If I don't specify this key attribute, then it produces an error. It says you need to have at least one key attribute inside an attribute view. So let us give a key attribute. Let us check KUNNR. So only why KUNNR? Customer number, it's the key of a table. So every customer is identified uniquely in the table. Next step, step number, step number five. In step number five, we need to do descriptive mapping or label mapping. What is descriptive mapping or label mapping? <coughs> For example, here I have customer number. Customer number, customer name. Customer number is KUNNR. Customer name is name one. Now please tell me, is it better to display in the report something like this, 001, customer name is Raju. Is it better to display 001 and Raju together or only 001? Whenever you want to tie up, whenever we want to tie up or whenever you want to bind name with customer ID, use descriptive mapping or label mapping. Other example, country ID, country name, country ID is land one, country name is land X. So bind land X to land one. So when you bind what happens? IN India. So both will display together, ID and description will display together. So in order to bind both these entities together, what I'm going to do here, KUNNR, here you have label column, I'll map to name one. And I will hide name one. So this is nothing but key and text. So this is the key and this is the text. Land one, I will bind to land X key text region I'll bind to BJDI BJDI is the description so I'm trying to bind customer ID with customer name country ID with country name region ID with region name and finally let us validate check so when you check if you can find any errors here you can click on the show log and click activate complete successfully activation and validation is completed successfully and finally close the catalog let's go to the content folder which is ECC ECC March 8th, SD, expand attribute view, 
right click on the attribute view right click on the attribute view and click data preview and click data preview and click raw data and let us click on raw data now let us do a sample unit test let us do a unit test so I'll go back to the source I'll go back to the source I'll perform a unit test click contents click execute so I will take this record I'll take this record 002 DE for DE the region is 08 for D the region is 08 <coughs> so I'll basically copy this customer ID because I want to test I'll copy this so here you have something called add filter click on add filter click KUNNR click on show list of values <coughs> copy paste the value over here but you don't see any value over here because the maximum values here they're restricted to 200 hits I will basically increase the hits click refresh when I refresh I find the customer ID 2 I'll select to selected values and click OK when I click OK and click execute so please see here 002 customer is wet D Germany 08 Baden so in here 002 D 08 is we only have the ID so let us get from the other tables T005 T so if it is D it is Germany and then let us go to T005 view if it is D08 is Baden so unit test is completed so after joining these three tables together after I join three tables together the join type is the text join so what are the steps add tables define relationship between tables define join type join type is the text join field selection for output just select the fields the required fields will be available in the output the output fields are available in the semantics we need to have at least one key attribute we need to have at least one key attribute and finally descriptive mapping or label mapping and finally right click on the attribute view and data preview so here what what are the different errors you may get when you're creating an attribute view what kind of errors can you expect <coughs> for example for example I select this join let's say I've given the join type as text join but I forgot to specify I forgot to specify language column I'll do a validation I'll do validation I'll click save and activate now let us click on show log completed with errors so what is the error so whenever you have an error you can go to an error log double click on the error double click on the error so see below for more information on the status of the activation jobs executed summary report customer attribute view status is error select the error message select the error message message encountered an error in the repository runtime extension no language column found for the join it clearly indicates that 
there's no language column found in the join so so whenever probably when you get this error just select this SPRS validate and activate not only this you may get different errors but whenever you get an error you can it clearly indicates what is the error double click completed successfully <clears throat> status is completed now in the semantics in the semantics for example I did not give the key attribute let's say I'll validate save and activate <coughs> double click on the error select the error what does it say encountered an error in the repository runtime extension no central table found no attribute has been specified as a key <coughs> so the center table is a KNA1 table it's an attribute table so it says no attribute has been defined as a key attribute so whenever you define a key the table is a center table so when you click on key which is customer ID validate and activate right click and do the unit test so I would like to uh, give one more information over here so whenever you data preview so when we data preview when we data preview click raw data so when you click on raw data it displays the entire data for all the columns for all the columns it displays data for example you want to select only few columns probably you may have 15 20 columns but you don't want to display all the columns in the output so you can go to the analysis tab you can go to the analysis tab drag and drop required columns to labels access whatever the columns that you want to see data you can just drag and drop click on table so only the selected columns you can see data so whenever you right click on him whenever you right click on an attribute view so here you find different options you find different options so one important op one important option is history now what is history option when you click on history option please see it maintains a versioning of an object it maintains who activated the object what is the user who is activated this object what is the activation date when was it last activated so you can find out what is the version of the object and always we have to make sure that the version is consistent across development quality and production you have to make sure these versions are always consistent across development quality and production so in order to view version of an object just right click and click history when you click history it shows which developer has activated this what is the current version of the object we can also transport objects based on versions so from one version you can transport based on versions from one system to a different system which is known as time based transports that we will see when we discuss about transports but this is how you can basically see a version of the object and check across different systems in an attribute view in an attribute view as we discussed there are three subtypes one is standard second one is time and the third one is derived okay for one last time I will repeat these steps and then I'm, I'm going to the next attribute view whenever we create an attribute view so first I will tell the definition attribute views are used to join master data tables the steps that are involved to create an attribute view 
right click on the package click new click on an attribute view give the name provide the description click finish once you finish at the data foundation add the required tables define relationship between tables define join types field selection for output the, se the selected output is available in the semantics we need to have at least one key attribute descriptive mapping label mapping validate activate right click on the view data preview and do unit test from the source system so that's the standard attribute view now let us see the next attribute view which is derived attribute view <clears throat> one more thing please see i created an attribute view and just i'm trying to delete this when i delete this you get an error the object is currently being used in another editor cannot continue with the deletion close the editor manually and delete the object so whenever you keep an object open we cannot delete the object so you have, you have to just close this and then right click on the object and click delete and activate this we need to delete the object now the second topic we have for today is the first topic was to show you how to create an attribute view the second topic i would like to show you here is what is time based attribute views and what are derived attribute views first let us start with derived attribute views when you right click on a package click new click on the attribute view i am creating one derived attribute view i'll give the name as at underscore ship to party now first of all what is a derived attribute view in the subtype i select derived <clears throat> let us take one scenario for this especially in sales we have customer we have customers customers basically order and delivery ship to party bill we are generating a bill or an invoice bill to party so customer is one business entity ship to party is a, in a, is another business entity and bill to party is another business entity but these three business entities have a relationship for example i may be a customer raju is a customer raju is basically shipping to john he is shipping an iphone 7 or iphone 6 plus to john and raju is billing on sita's credit card so raju is a customer raju is shipping iphone to john but he is trying to bill on sita's credit card so directly or indirectly even john is also a customer and sita is also a customer because we are using sita's credit card so whenever you want to do analysis you want to do analysis for the same attribute view the functionality of the attribute view should be same but with a different name for example my name is nagarjuna sometimes people call me arjun or sometimes people call me naga still i am the same person who is responding 
whether they call me nagarjuna whether they call me arjun or naga i am the person who is responding to them so what is my alias name here my alias name is arjun so when people call me arjun or nagarjuna the same person is responding in the same way same attribute view has a different name this is known as a derived attribute view or an alias now why do we require a desired why do we require a derived attribute view in what scenarios do we require especially when doing analysis on transaction data let's say i would like to know my net revenue i would like to know my net revenue based on customers <coughs> or based on bill to party or based on ship to party i cannot use same attribute view twice when doing analysis in an analytic view so we have another view called analytic view analytic views are the multi dimensional views they basically have a multiple dimensions so customer is one dimension i'm going to ask a question who are my top customers based on net revenue so what am i trying to do i'm trying to analyze customer data based on net revenue i may ask another question okay based on bill to party get my net revenues <coughs> so this is another dimension so bill to party is another dimension or ship to party is another dimension the question here is can i have a same attribute view twice in an analytic view we cannot have so we need to create a derived attribute view a derived attribute view is nothing but it is actually referencing to the same attribute view it is referencing to the same attribute view but with a different name like how a same person can have two names one is an alias name and the other one is a original name so whenever you call ship to party is actually calling the customer but with a different name so when you have such requirement of calling the same attribute view with a different name go for a derived attribute view so how do we create derived attribute views and what are the limitations of a derived attribute view let us see this i'll go back to hana studio name at ship to party label ship to party sub type is derived derive from so where do you want to derive ship to party where do you want to derive this you want to derive from where where would i want to derive from customer so where is customer customer is in ecc march 8 under hd so i'll click on browse i'll click on browse i'll go to ecc march 8 i'll go to ecc march 8 expand this expand sd expand attribute views select at customer so what are we trying to do we are trying to reference we are trying to reference at customer to ship to party so i'll select at customer click okay i'll select at customer click okay sub type is derived view type is attribute view the package in which i am creating this is this is the package this is the description and this is the technical name and click finish once we click finish now you see there is a pink color ribbon on the top so usually when you create an attribute view of type standard what is the ribbon color it is lightish blue this is very light blue color but when you create a derived attribute view it is light pink so what does it indicate is whenever you see a pink color it is a derived attribute view so what are the limitations of a derived attribute view 
please see when i click on the data foundation when i click on the data foundation so can i change any of the properties over here so i cannot change everything is a display mode when i right click on the join everything is disabled i cannot do any change because click on the data foundation click on the free space click on the free space now we are seeing the properties of an attribute view we are seeing the properties so this is the property of an attribute view if we scroll down let us scroll down what do we see here the base attribute view for at ship to party the base attribute view for at ship to party is at customer so at ship to party is referencing to customer so if you want to change ship to party you have to change customer only whenever you make changes whenever you make changes to customer attribute view only then ship to party attribute view change otherwise it is in display mode all that we can do for a derived attribute view is all that we can do for a derived attribute view is click on the semantics click on the view property only we can change the description <coughs> i can give something like ship to party 100 only that i can do is i can change the description apart from description i can i cannot do anything just validate and click save and activate click show log click show log completed successfully okay attribute views are used to join master data tables attribute views are of three types one is standard second one is derived and third one is <coughs> time based so now we are seeing derived attribute views derived attribute views are the views we are referencing the base attribute views because in an analytic view we cannot use the same attribute view we can reference that to create a different attribute view we can reference the same attribute view with a different name attribute view is same with a different name it's a derived attribute view so there are two attribute views one is a derived the other one is a copy now what is the difference between copying an attribute view right click on an attribute view click copy or right click on a package click new click on the attribute view <coughs> click on the attribute view i am going to create one more attribute view i am going to create one more attribute view is you unable to hear me i'm sorry uh, someone send me we lost your voice is everything okay hello yeah, okay thank you thank thank you okay so i was discussing about copy what is a copy a copy is nothing but you're taking as a template you can take as a template you can do modifications to the view for example i'm going to create a new attribute view at underscore build to party i'm creating an attribute view at underscore build to party so build to party is the name and the description is build to party i'll click copy from copy from okay <coughs> so when i select copy from you see subtype is blank now why is that subtype is blank is because
if you copy a standard attribute view, it creates a standard attribute view. If you copy a derived attribute view, it creates a derived attribute view. So a copy is nothing but you're creating a copy of a standard, you're creating a copy of a derived attribute view. So if you copy a derived attribute view, you cannot make any change because again you're copying a derived attribute view, which changes are not possible. If you copy a standard attribute view, you can make change. So I copy from, click browse, go to the package, ECC March 8. I'll select, I will select AT customer, which is a standard attribute view. Click OK and click finish. So when I click finish, when I click finish, now can I make any change? So let us see. I can click on the data foundation. So what is the ribbon that you see? Light blue color. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to explain one concept <coughs> called design time filter or constraint. So we're actually seeing two topics now. The topic one is how to copy an attribute view that we just see. The second topic I'm going to show you now is after you copy, you want to do some modifications. What modification I want to do? I want to create a design time filter. What is a design time filter? Design time filter is a filter that executes before a join condition. I'll give a scenario over here. Let us see one scenario. Now we know in sales, there are different types of orders. <coughs> if you want to filter on a particular order, for example, you only want to see data for a standard order. You want to see data for a standard order. Now, why do you want to filter data first of all? According to the business requirement, the output of the data model, the output of the data model should only display standard orders. And we will not even give a provision to the business. We will, we will not even give provision to business to select whether they want to see standard order, whether they want to see blocked orders or a different, uh, different types of orders. All that I want to make sure that the data should only come out only for standard order. Okay, what I can do here is, let us take land one in this example. If you see my data preview, if I basically click data preview now, before the object is inactive, because I haven't activated yet. So first I will activate the object, I'll just activate the object. Now I'll click data preview. When I click data preview, here you see there are three tabs. One is analysis, second one is distinct values, third one is raw data. If I click on distinct values, click land one. If I click on land one in the distinct values, you see there are different countries over here. US, DE, Germany, Great Britain, France, for US alone, there are around 14,905 records. For DE, you have 2,923 records. But what is my requirement here? I don't want to see for all the countries. I don't want to see customer from all these countries. I only want to see customer from US region. <coughs> here I can do two things directly do a filter on US in the table. The second thing is give a provision to the end user, give a provision to the business, uh, give a flexibility to business 
So they should select in runtime whether they want to see US customers or whether they want to see Great Britain customers. <coughs> so what does this mean is you can create filters when doing data modeling or you can create filter after execution of the view after the data preview but the filter I'm going to create now is during the data model so I'll go back to the data model so this is one tab this so this is the data preview tab <coughs> besides the data preview tab I have one more tab you see all these are different tabs on the top you can navigate from one tab to a different tab I can click on this tab I can click on this tab right click on land one right click on land one and click apply filter so this is known as design time filter what is the advantage of design time filter the advantage is minimizing the data transfer from one layer to a different layer whenever you minimize the data transfer the views have highest performance now why do you want to transfer if the business requirement is only to show US customers then what is my what is the need to transfer all the customers to the front end so whenever we keep a logic whenever we keep logic close to data always try to keep logic close to the data and also when I'm creating a filter I'm creating directly on a table I'm creating filter on a table so even before the data leaves from a table even before data leaves from the table I'm actually filtering on a table the advantage is performance the less the number of records you transfer the more the performance you have so design time filter is a filter that limits the data transfer from one layer to a different layer in order to increase the performance of the view these design time filters are also known as constraints you'll have a certification question on this when you write a certification question they will ask you one question here or in the interview also they will ask you the similar kind of question design time filters execute before a join or after the join so here you see the join the join condition is the text join the condition of the join is the text join but will you execute a design time filter before a join condition or after the join condition so design time filters execute before the join condition means even before the data leaves from the table the join the, the condition is applied or the filter is applied so I'll click apply filter on land one operator equal to value click on show list of values and select US and select US if you're not able to find because of lot of IDs just you can type in US over here and click find and select US and click OK and click OK so I created a design time filter on land one I click validate I click save and activate and click data preview again now this time when I click data preview <coughs> click on distinct values again click on land one so please see this time we only see values only for US you, we are not seeing other countries it means that we created a design time filter to limit the data transfer because the requirement over here is fixed we have a fixed requirement you only want to see customers only from US region whenever you try to minimize data the faster the view executes So now I'll go back I'll click back so there are two concepts I'm trying to show you here I'm trying to show you here the first concept is how do we copy an attribute view 
The second concept is when I copy an attribute view, I'm making a change. The change I'm trying to make to an existing attribute view is I'm creating a design time filter. Now, where did I create this design time filter? I created an AT build to party. So for AT build to party, I'm only showing customers who are from US region. Now, when creating ship to party, did I use build to party as my base attribute view or AT customer as a base attribute view? So if I double click on ship to party, I'll click on the free space. I'll click on the free space. Please see here, I use AT customer as a base attribute view. So build to party and what is the difference between build to party and ship to party? In build to party, I can make changes because I've taken it as a template. But in ship to party, I cannot make change because the base attribute view is AT customer. So I'll double click on AT customer. I'll double click on AT customer. I'll click on the data foundation. I'll click on the data foundation. I'll click on the data foundation. From KNA1 table, from table KNA1, I would like to select additional columns like name to, a telephone number, postal code, this postal code. So I have selected few more columns from KNA1 table. I'll click validate and click save and activate. Okay. Now I'll go back to, I'll go back to, so where did I make change? I made the change in AT customer. One more thing, whenever you, whenever we open an attribute view, when you want to see a refreshed view, you may, you, you actually, we actually added few additional columns over here. I made a change and I activated this view. I activated this view, this view got active. So whenever you want to see the change, just try to close everything. Just right click on here, click close all. You can close to the right or to the left, close others or close. So I'm doing close all. Everything is closed. I'll open 80 customer. So these are the additional columns I have. And I'll open 80 ship to party. If I open AT ship to party, please see in ship to party also we have other columns accessed. In A to build to party, in AT build to party, we only have these columns when I copied. When I copied whatever the columns I have, I have now. But in AT ship to party, whatever the changes I make to AT customer is also reflected in AT ship to party. I'm moving on to the next concept. So the conclusion here is for a derived attribute view, whenever the base attribute view change, it reflects in the derived attribute view, but not in the copied attribute views. Copied attribute views are like templates. You can make changes. The next concept I would like to show here is, please see in the AT customer, in the AT customer, we know what is the importance of text join. When I click on data preview, when I click on data preview and click on raw data, when I click on data preview and click on raw data, now in this total output, the total output that we see here, what are the columns that have descriptions in multiple languages? So in, in total output of the view, what are the columns which have, which store descriptions in multiple languages? One is Landex, which is country text. 
and the other column is bjdi this is also storing languages so i just want to show you the text join functionality when i right click on the system when i click properties when i click additional properties when i change the language to english when i, when I change from english to chinese I'm changing this language from English to Chinese. Click apply. <coughs> click apply. And click OK. Click apply and click OK. I go back to the view again. I'll go back to the view again. ECC March 8. I'll go back to the view again, expand the view, right click on <coughs> AT customer, right click on AT customer, click data preview, click raw data. So please see, the country description is Chinese and the BJDI description is Chinese. So, based on the user session, so based on the user session, Landex, Landex, BJDI, and customer name. Or the customer ID. So in here, if you see, based on the user session, the descriptions are changing. If you select Chinese, it shows Chinese descriptions. If you select English, it's going to show English descriptions. So this is the functionality of the text join. So dynamically, it restricts language key based on user session. The second point I would like to highlight over here is fine we have three tables here because we have three tables because we have three tables I have given us text join how about in a scenario when you have a single table for example When I right click on an attribute view, when I, okay, when I right click on a package, click new, click on attribute view. This is my scenario. I am creating a new attribute view only for country. Only for country, I am creating a new attribute view. Subtype is standard, click finish. Subtype is standard, click finish. Click on the data foundation. I'll click on the plus icon. I'll add the table T005T. Select the table. Click OK. <clears throat> so can I use text join now? Because we have a single table. If we have two tables, then we can use text join. But here I have only single table. Then how how would I implement text join? Let, let us see this. <coughs> I have land one, land x. My requirement is to display land one and land x, country ID and country text. Here what I can do is I can right click on SPRS, which is the language key. I can right click on this language key which is SPRS and click apply filter. So what I'm doing, I'm creating a design time filter or a constraint. I'll click on apply filter. Here, I will specify system variable. So this system variable that I'm providing over here is a standard SAP system variable. The variable is dollar dollar language dollar dollar 
So this is the standard system variable that is provided by SAP. So what is the use of this variable? Let us see. When I click OK, I created a design time filter and I passed system variable. I click validate and I click activate. So obviously we need to have one key attribute. I take in land one as key attribute, validate and activate. So I created a new attribute view called AT customer. Right click on this and data preview. And click raw data. So it is showing in Chinese. Okay. Let me right click again on the system. Click properties. Click additional properties. From Chinese, let us change to English. Click apply. And click OK. Let us go back to the package. Let us go back to the package. Let us go back to the package. Right click on 80 country. Data preview again. Click raw data. This is shown in English. Okay. So when I'm changing my logon language, automatically the description is being changed. But still, did I anywhere specify that this is a text join because only a text join can do that based on user session it, it gives the descriptions okay so when you have a single table when you want to provide the same functionality of text join so text join is between two tables on a single table you want to show descriptions based on user session then create a design time filter in that filter pass system variable The output is similar to text join. For example, let us take one more scenario. In here, my logon language is English. My logon language is English. I do not want to show my text in English, for example. This is another case. A logon language in English. So instead of a design time filter, instead of the standard variable, I will provide. So what is the language for Chinese? So we need to find the code for Chinese. I think it is. Uh, <coughs> let's try with one. Let us try with one. So I'll give one and click OK and click OK. I'll validate and activate. Yes, I'm assuming that the Chinese is one. I created a filter on one data preview and click raw data. So Chinese. So, but please see the properties. It's English, but here it's shown in Chinese. So it means that even you can overrule, even we can overrule the logon language by creating a static filter. Now, in this case, I created a static filter. Now, what is static filter here? I try to limit the data transfer only for Eng only for Chinese. So, if I remove this and give dollar dollar language dollar dollar, then it dynamically changes the language based on user session. So, simply to say, text join is used. When you want to show descriptions based on user session. <coughs> when you want to show la language in a different. When you want to show descriptions in a different language. We can create static filter. The static filter we can specify what language you want to see. It only displays that particular language. Let us say you have a single table. In a single table you still want to. Show the text join functionality. You can create a design time filter. At the design time filter, you can enter the system variable. Okay. So that is for today's session. Let me recap what we are seeing in today's session once again for five minutes. Then I will close the session and we'll open for question answers. You may type in your questions in the chat box. Or I'll unmute you. You can ask the question. So first in today's session, we started with creation of attribute views. <coughs> when creating attribute views, 
or when creating information views, there are three types, attribute, analytic, calculation. Attribute views are again three subtypes, standard, time, and derived. First, we started to create a standard attribute view. The steps to create a standard attribute view, right click on the package, new, create an attribute view, add tables, define relationships, define join types, field selection for output. Whenever you take a text join, don't forget to take language key, SPRAS. At least we need to have one key attribute. Descriptive mapping or label mapping, validate, activate. Do a unit test and check data validation between source and target. The second exercise I was trying to show you what is a derived attribute view. A derived attribute views are nothing but an alias of an attribute view. They are basically the same attribute views with a different name. Whenever you change a base attribute view, the derived attribute view change. All that we can do in a derived attribute view is to change the description. Next we see copy of an attribute view. When you copy an attribute view, you are creating as a template. You can make your own changes. It is not dependent on the base attribute view. During this copy, we also discuss about a concept called constraint or a design time filter. Design time filters are used to limit the data transfer from one layer to a different layer. The advantage is performance. When you have a requirement to limit the data at the lower level, we don't have to give option to business to choose what data you want to see in runtime. For example, you want to limit to see data for a single company code. Not for all company codes, you can create a design time filter or a constraint. Later we try to see the difference between text join and using a system variable. Text join shows text based on user session. But when you have a single table, we cannot define text join. So we created a system variable, dollar dollar language dollar dollar. We pass this variable inside the SPRAS, which is language column, by creating a design time filter. When a user log in to a particular language, you can still continue to create static filters. Means use is logged in English, but you want to show in Chinese. So there is an option to create on SPRAS, you can SPRAS, right click. Whatever the specified language you want to show to the output, you can restrict that language. So it will overrule the logon language. One last thing I would like to show for today is whenever you create an attribute view, these attribute views are known as design time views. Design time view is nothing but a view that we are creating in design time. You have something called runtime views. The other name for runtime views are known as column views. These are known as column views. When you right click on an attribute view, you have something called copy column view name. You can click on copy column view name. These column view names, these column views are nothing but these are runtime. When you expand a catalog, when you expand a catalog, go to underscore sys underscore BIC. This is the standard system schema name. When you expand the schema, when you expand the schema, underscore sys underscore BIC, here you see column views, expand the column views, right click on the column view, right click on the column view, click filters, copy paste, copy paste the column view, click whole word, click OK. Again, let us try again. Click filters, copy the column view, so we don't have to give in again sys underscore BIC. 
because we are actually searching on sys underscore BIC. Click whole word, click OK. So here you can see the column view. These are nothing but this runtime views. Double click on the column view, double click on the column view. So here this is the output and this is the create statement. Okay. HANA is known as model to code. We generate the model, system generates the code. So this is the model I generated. And further, the code that system generated is this. We cannot change this code. This code is generated by system. We cannot modify or we cannot change. It's only display mode. That's why HANA is called as model to code. So we generate models, system generates the code on its own. This code is known as SQL script. Attribute views are optimized to process complex joins. Attribute views are optimized to process complex joins. These complex joins are these code, the code that you see here executes on a powerful engine. That engine is known as join engine. Now, if I scroll back again, if I navigate again to an attribute view, if I navigate again to an attribute view, and if I click on the free space, if I click on the free space, if I click on the free space, what is the engine that is involved? Join engine. Just with one last sentence, I would close this session. So here we have engine. Engine is nothing but the join engine. We are creating a view, nothing but a column view that is generated based on the model I created. And tables are in schema. Tables are in schema. Schema is in catalog. Model that we are creating is in content. So catalog schema, schema has tables. These tables are in-memory tables. These tables are column tables. Based on these tables, I'm creating a data model. The model creates a column view, which is in sys underscore BIC, which has the logic on how to process this code. And this code is processed on the join engine. So tables are separated from views and views are separated from data processing engines. So tables are in catalog, views we create in content, and data processing engines are inside HANA, inside the index server. There is a server called index server, which is a data processing engine. Inside this engine, you have something called a join engine. Join engine is optimized to process complex joins. So attribute views are used to join master data tables. Attribute views execute on a join engine. Join engine is optimized to process complex joins. And HANA is model to code. We generate models, system generates the code. And these are in column views. Column views are in sys underscore BIC schema. So that's for today's session. We'll see tomorrow to discuss time-based attribute views and its use cases. So now we will read the chat questions and I will give answers to those questions. Thank you.
So let us read the questions now. So let me read the questions. Okay. <clears throat> so the first question we have. Can we put a user restriction on this? For example, if a user is from US, he wants both ENG, he wants both ENG as well as Japanese. Can we put like that? Yes, we can put. You have to create an alias table. So when you create an alias table, so for one join, you need to take it as a text join and the other join, you need to create a static filter. So for a static filter, you're actually telling, okay, only show Japanese language. But when you take a text join, you're actually telling the join, okay, login based on user session. So in an attribute view, we can take the same table twice. One is the original table and create an alias table. And now for one table, create a text join for the other table, create a design time filter with static filter and then you can see both the languages simply what you can do is I'll just try to show you it's very easy so go back to HANA studio hello Hello. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. 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 <coughs> Hello. Brett, are you there? Hello. 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 Can everyone able to hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. We are able to hear you, sir. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, it got disconnected in between. Okay. I'll read the questions again from first. Okay. The question here, the first question that we have here is, can we put user restriction on this? For example, if a user is from US, he wants to both English as well as in Japanese. Can we put that a condition? That is the question. Yes, we can achieve this requirement. So to achieve this requirement, what we have to do is take the same table, take the same text table twice. For one join, for one join, take it design time filter permanently restrict to that language to the one that you want to see in the output for the second one you may go for text join or you may choose to go for a different language so to achieve this it is very simple to do this I'll show you let me log on to the system provide the username and password so let's go to HANA studio so double click on the customer so please see here so here I have 
two tables here. For example, according to the requirement, the participant want to see one language in different, the other one in different. So what we can do here, right click on SPRS, but please see, you still have text join. <coughs> you still have text join. But instead of text join, what I would like to do here is, I would like to take it as an inner join. I will take it inner join. <coughs> I'll right click on SPRES, apply filter. Take in English, select English, click OK, click OK. I'm specifying this static filter. So what is the filter here? Filter is equal to English. And here this is a text join. And here this is a text join. So for one join I have text. So let me log on and go to the properties and this I will change to Chinese and this I will change to Chinese oops I think the network got delay the delay in the network <coughs> click apply click OK so what can we do now validate activate close let me go back to the package let's go back to the package let us go back to the package So now I right click on customer, right click data preview. So please see here, when I basically click on data preview, so we have two things. One is Landex and the other one is <coughs> BJDI. <coughs> getting disconnected hello 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 <coughs> yes sir I think it's getting disconnected again and again so I log in again. I'll just try to log in again. So what I'm trying to show here is now this is what you wanted to see. So you wanted to see one in English, the other one in Chinese. <coughs> for the English, for the the one that I'm showing in English. You see, what is my logon language here? 
if you see my logon language it's Chinese so for one column you can see in Chinese the other one in English so that you can do via static filter in the other one in the text join so let's read the next question I'll go to the next question <coughs> excuse me so how will how will deliver to end user in SAP CC we will create a T code but where but here how will how we will do this here so <clears throat> I think the question I'll try to rephrase the question Okay, probably the question would be in the ECC in the ECC we access using T code but in HANA how can we access these T codes probably that could be the question if that is the question then we can we can access using front-end applications like Fury so Fury is a new generation UI so how we have in SAP GUI how we have T codes in the Fury, we have something called tiles. Using the tiles, using the tiles, you can access different applications. So there are different apps where you can access. So it's similar to T codes in the ECC. So do we have an option to check the generated SQL for the selection made? Yes. I'll just show you. For the selection made, how can you see SQL? So if I right click on any of the view, right click and data preview, right click and data preview, click on raw data, click on raw data, click on show log, click on show log, generated SQL, double click on generated SQL. So this is the generated SQL. This is the SQL that is generated on top of view. So select top 1000 KUNR name one from column view click close and close let us see next question <clears throat> so do we need a separate attribute for different countries it is not needed a different attribute view for countries but just I want to show how actually the functionality of dollar dollar language works so, so it can be an, a different requirement but just I have taken an example because the table is already available so for that I have taken and the main focus was to show you how the you know dollar dollar language functionality works it could be any table for that matter so can we use a custom variable in the design time filters? Yes, you can use custom variables as well. I understand that I understand what a derived attribute view, but what what's the use of derived attribute views? Where can we find the list of variables? So there is a documentation I prepared in the Dropbox, so you'll find all the standard derived at uh, standard uh, variables but the real use case of derived attribute view we can only see when we see analytic views in an analytic views when you want to create a logical join data foundation with the same attribute view then the only way for, to go for it is to create a derived attribute view something the example I just shown you you want to display two different languages on the same table 
So how we can use a table as an alias? We can use an attribute view with a different join conditions. We can use with a different join conditions. <clears throat> Next question. How can we change the labels names at the top? Currently it is showing SAP CC labels. Okay, I'll show you how to change. Now if you go to an attribute view, if you go to the data foundation, you can select any column. You can select any column. You see here, there is a name and there is a label. Now if you want to change the label, you can just type in customer ID. You can just type in customer ID. So when you change the label, in the semantics, when you go to the semantics, you see it shows the label now. This is the technical name and this is the label. So once you activate, these labels are available. Let us see next question. What What is the meaning of raw data? Raw data is nothing but it's actually showing you the entire data. For all the columns, it is showing you the data. Raw data means in one go, you can see all data. But when you go for analysis, there's another tab called analysis. In analysis tab, you can select, okay, you want to filter, you want to view only these columns, you want to do, you know, you want to see data in different perspectives, like in bar chart, pie chart, column chart. So raw data means all the data and analysis we can see selected data. Where can I find the recorded sessions on Monday and Tuesday? These are in the Dropbox. In the Dropbox, we have these recordings. Please ask Bharat. So Bharat, please, uh, uh, please inform Rahul on how we can access these recordings. Can we have multiple values on filters? Yes, we can have multiple values on filters. We can have multiple values on filters. So please repeat the procedure. Please repeat the procedure to language display once again. Okay, sure. So nothing. So we have to go to customer. Select the data foundation. Just we can create a design time filter here. And here this is a text join. Just I'm creating an additional thing that I'm creating here is a design time filter. That's it. You can see in both the languages. Thank you everyone to attend today's session. And We'll see you tomorrow, same time. Thank you.